In the following video, I'm going to show you how to do question 3 of the June 2010 OCR D1 paper. It's a question on linear programming. Let's take a look. Um, it starts off by showing you the following diagram. And it says the constraints of the linear programming problem are shown below. The feasible region is in the unshaded region, including the boundaries. Part 1 asks you to write down the inequalities that describe the feasible region. Well, let's just make clear, the feasible region is including the boundaries, um, everything in the boundaries and inside what I've just drawn here. So the key to defining the feasible region is to define the lines that bound that triangle. So this line here is clearly the line x is equal to 0. So that's a nice easy one there. This line here well, you can see as you go across one line, you go up, across one, up one. So it's got gradient one, and it's going through the point zero, zero. So this has equation y equals to x. And this line here is a slightly tricky one. Well, it, there are 10 squares that define two units. So each square is 0 0.2. So going up from 6, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this point here must be 5 times 0 0.2, which is... 1, and so this point here must equal uh, 6 plus the 1 is 7. Now, what's the gradient here? Well, as you go across uh, 1, 2, 3, you go down exactly 2, and it's a negative gradient. That means that this uh, line has uh, a y-intercept of 7, so I'm going to write 7, and the gradient, as you go across 3, you go down 2, it must be uh, a, a negative 2 thirds gradient. So using y equals mx plus c, c is 7 uh, and m is minus 2 thirds. So what are the three uh, uh, inequalities that define the region? Well, x certainly has to be bigger than or equal to 0. At the same time, y, the y values here, has got to be bigger than or equal to x. And at the same time as that, the y values here must be less than or equal to 7 minus 2 thirds x. So I'm going to just take those uh, to the other page. And the answer to part 1 is as follows. Okay, then it says find the values of x and y at the optimal point of this objective function, uh, p1. Okay, so we want to make that uh, as big as possible. There are different ways of doing this, but the easiest way is probably to know that the uh, maximum of that will always occur at one of the vertices of the feasible region. So it will either occur here at 0, 0, or at this point of intersection or at this point. So the points we need to check for, this was part one, the points we need to check are the coordinates 0, 0, uh, the coordinate 0, x is 0, y is 7, and the coordinate where the line y equals x intersects with the line 7 minus 2 thirds x. So for the other one, we want the intersection of the line y equals x with the line 7 minus 2 thirds x to find this intersection, we solve simultaneously. We've got equations 1 and 2. Uh, y is equal to x. I substitute that into equation 2. I use a different pen. We would get x, subbing in for y, is equal to 7 minus 2 thirds x. Okay, adding uh, 2 thirds x to both sides, we would get 1 and 2 thirds uh, x is equal to 7. And divide uh, to get x, we do 7. Uh, divided by 1 and 2 thirds, so 7 divided by 4.2, we would get the answer 4.2 for x here. We should get the answer 4.2 for x. And given that y equals x is the other equation, the other coordinate must be y is 4.2. So all we've got to do is check this set of coordinates, this set of coordinates, and this set of coordinates, uh, 4.2, 4.2 and substitute them into the uh, objective function p1. So at 0, 0, 
So for 0, 0, P1 is clearly 0, so that's not maximum. For 0, 7, P1 is equal to 0 plus 6 times 7, which is 42. And for 4.2, uh, 4.2, P1 is equal to um, 6 times 4.2 plus 4.2, which is 29.4. So 29.4. So what's the value of x and y at the optimum? Optimum is at clearly 0, 7 and value P1 is 42 clearly at that point. So we've done part 1 and part 2 here. Okay, moving on to part 3, it now changes the objective function uh, to be PK is KX plus 6Y where K is a positive number. Now it's very similar to P1, apart from K was chosen to be 1 in the case of P1, K is now uh, a number that you've got to assume isn't 1 and is certainly positive. It says calculate the coordinates of the optimal point and the corresponding value of PK when the optimal point is not the same as part 1. Well, again, just because the objective function has changed, we still know that the maximum will occur will occur at either of the vertices, so it will be at either 0, 0, at 0, 7, or at 4.2, 4.2. So, uh, if at 0, 0, PK would be 0, that's not maximum. At 0, 7, PK would have the value um, 6 times 7, which is 42 still. And at 4.2, uh, 4.2, PK would have the value um, 4.2K, 4.2K plus 6 times 4.2, which is 25.2. Uh, now, it says calculate the coordinates of the optimal point and the corresponding value of PK when the optimal uh, point is not the same as in part 2. So... Uh, when it's not the same as in part 2, this could be the optimal point depending on the value of k. Now it asks us in the last part to actually work out um, the values of k for which um, the point in part 2 is, is still optimal, so where 42 is still optimal. So for k, for the um, for 4.2 and 4, the coordinates 4.2, 4.2 to be the optimal, this thing here has to be bigger than 42. Otherwise, that one would be the optimal solution. So we're looking, um, and conversely, this is the optimal solution as long as it's bigger than this. So if we're trying to find the range of values where um, this is still optimal, we're looking for the range of values where 42 is bigger than 4.2k plus 25.2. Subtracting 25.2 off both sides, 42 minus 25.2 is 16.8. Uh, so we get where 16.8 is bigger than 4.2k. And dividing both sides by 4.2, we're getting uh, where 4 is bigger than k. Or an easier way of saying that, where k is less than 4. So when k is less than 4, this is still the optimal solution. When k is bigger than or equal to 4, this becomes the optimal solution. Okay, thank you for uh, watching this video. I hope you found it useful in your revision for decision one uh, linear programming.